Most people in America are familiar with what is and isn't their lawful rights. This is not rock and science, Junior. We have rights. Our rights are what matter during election time. Our rights are what matter during controversial time. Our rights are what matter in all of our records of our life, and our rights are what matter in the possessions and property of our life. Our rights are what matter in our legal name, and our rights are what matter in everything and every kind of moniker or professional name we use to earn for our name. You see, people like me might have different monikers. Like, I have the moniker Dragon Priest. I also own the moniker Archangel Advocate. I also might have owned or at one time utilized Blaze Justice. But the truth is, my monikers and my pen names are mine, no one else's. In the life of a man, he has the right to claim those monikers, those pen names, based on what he's doing or the programs that he's presenting. But openly, when it comes to the business of his life with the actual contracting people, the people who are actually participating and paying the wage of the project or the paying for the presentation or making the donation or giving the stipend, those people will probably have the b business legal name. So in life, you're not entitled to anything on anyone's life. You don't have the right to go thoroughly investigating is not what the internet is trying to show you. The internet is trying to say, hey, you got their name, you're going to pay, go ahead, you can get anything you want. But that's really quite a privacy violation. We have to stop those companies because they are obliterating people's right to privacy. We have to put those companies out of business because we don't need those companies. We also know that people do those things and start to claim rights over other people, which is not correct. My prime example is that I like Yelp in general as a way to look up services. It helps us. But what I don't like about Yelp is that it allowed someone who never, ever was a student in my program to complain about my program. And I'm pretty mad at them for that. And I'd like to really go after them for that because that is sort of slander. They're allowing slander with that comment. And I should have had, within their programming in their system, the right for rebuttal. So if they're going to get a negative commentary system going, they need to send an invitation out to the person, just like the Better Business Bureau does, to allow the person to respond, to allow the individual to rebuke or refute the accusation. I've had to do that once or twice in my life when an immature child tried to come through my program and then lie about what he was doing there. But we handled it, and frankly, we won, and preserved our reputation. There are many people in the world who like to gossip negatively. And it's true, if you give someone a bad experience, then they are more likely to complain about you to 250 people than present you in referrals to 250 people. But let's face it, we also have to be mature about that because sometimes somebody just has a bad day. So we have to consider whether or not the story is worth it, not only to our own version of reputation, but also to the disparagement and the legal liabilities of the other person's reputation. Usually we only carry those comments to people that we have confidentialities with. We say, well, I know you have that opinion about that situation, but since I was in the middle of that, I'm going to share with you what really happened so you have accurate and balanced information.